was in the air, yep. air, like hold it. That no, note no, for a long no, time. No, 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 no. You know all the uh, Hello friends, Michael Dobson here. The Michael Dobson. Sure. No, that's you. Oh, it is really <laughs> <laughs> one of the three, the eldest Dobson. Right? <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you act like you're the older brother when you're with those two guys? They would say no. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you think you act like it? Do I act like the eldest? Do you put them in check? We want to know who beat oh, up. Oh, okay. Well, then, well, then, then Paul would be the first person to cut because Paul because, beat up you. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I uh, you beat up Paul. The, yeah. <laughs> oh, poor guy. I have to tell you this story. Okay. Because here's just a quintessential little kind of slice of Paul growing up with me as his big brother. Yeah. Is um, my dad was really choked at me because I was making table t tennis. Like we had a table tennis um, set up in our home. Yeah. And I was making I was making brackets for the net. And my dad was really excited because the ones we have were sucked. So I made these really heavy duty, sturdy ones. Yes. On my way home from school, walking home, I think some kids walking with an air pistol, and I'm like, "Oh, that's really cool." And he said, "Trade you your <laughs> your brackets for for the gun." I'm like, "Oh, that's a no brainer. I'll take the gun." Yeah. So I get home. My you dad's completely <laughs> choked at me because because he was waiting for those. He never got them. So I got this gun, which he was debating whether or not I should be allowed to keep it. Yes. So I convinced him, no, no, I'm your guy. I'm good. I'll be totally yeah. safe. So cut to nice summer day. Me laying face down, watching Paul play in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a little kid dancing around. Him. I get a beat on him. I just go, <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, his in feet. the head, face? His, his feet. Like you didn't go for his butt, or you hit him? It was it was face. cruel. In the face? Yeah, it was horrible. Where did you hit him? Right between the eyes, it was a perfect shot. You like this little. No, that's not perfect, man. You could have killed him. His feet goes go up from underneath him. He's flat out of the lawn. I'm sorry for laughing, Paul. <laughs> I'm like, oh no. My mom comes out yeah. to see me. Can you imagine how this looked? I got a gun in my hand. I'm leaning over my brother. He's laying down. He's flat down. I'm leaning over with my gun. I go, what did you do? And I'm turning. I'm like, <laughs> and then Paul's like, Try not to fight. Right? He's being the being the best brother on the planet. Doesn't want to get me in trouble. Uh, I feel bad because I, I got into powerlifting and everything later on, and and I became this big dude. And yeah. I was into martial arts and everything. And and Paul, first car that he got, he got a, a beautiful little Fiat 2000 convertible. Okay. And uh, he came over, super proud, first car. Come wanted to take me out, his big brother for for riding. It was a beautiful summer's day. So big lumbering Dobbs and his brother gets into the seat, Paul wants to show me how uh, how much takeoff it has, like how much how much power. Yeah. So he tromps on it, and of course my weight shifts in the seat, shears the brackets right off the back. <laughs> like, oh yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? I go flat down in the back of the car, I'm staring at the sky, and I can't stop laughing, because I, I got the, you know the way we are, it's like, it's visual comedy, right? Yes. It's like, I just thought it was hysterical, like the back of the seat just flew right off, and, and I'm in the back of the car. Killing myself laughing. Paul looks over. I can't believe what he just. He's like, <laughs> he goes, man, it's really funny. Broke my car. So now I reach for the door handle, and he goes, "Pook." No, off. you did. I'm like, How I go, strong no, were you? Sonny goes, please, please, just don't touch anything. Stop touching my car. I started to look you up because you know, obviously, I'm interviewing you, <laughs> and, and you still came anyway. Cat. Scrolling down, and and your dog snores like a mother, man. He's got a dog here. What kind of yeah. dog is that? It's a Shih Tzu. No, it it's not him or me. You have so many credits. I was like, I'm jealous of that. Okay, I'm jealous of that one. I tried for that one. I remember that one. Oh, he's on all. He's on every single show I was on, plus more. <laughs> yeah, you, you, Sorry, you, you're a very uh, accomplished voice actor. Thanks, bro. One of the guys I looked up to. Thanks, man. Yeah, that's changed over the years, but at yeah. the start, I, <laughs> in the beginning, as he got to know me, then he went, "Well, that was seriously misplaced." <laughs> all right, first question. Yeah. What was your favorite role to play in voice acting? Well. I'm a huge Batman fan, so when I, I got cast as, as the voice of Batman in Batman Black and White... Okay, that was the question was I had to come up. Like, seriously, Batman? You were Batman? Yeah, that was pretty... Oh. But not... not, not it, it, was, um, it, it, was a black, it was a standalone series. It was 20 episodes. 
and it was based on the black and white uh, comic series. Okay. And so what they did was they all the ones that had won awards for best writing, best <laughs> artist. Sir, you know. Your dog is going <laughs> nuts. She, she's bored. She doesn't yeah. want to hear that. Sounds like a pig yeah. snorting. She's she's uh -huh. sorry. Yeah. Are you sorry? <laughs> I don't think you're very sorry. We're at your studio. This is your studio where you actually have clients in and everything. Mm -hmm. I've seen his room. Man, I would love to take a shot of your room later sure. on. But stop farting with your mouth. You do a lot of work out of here, right? Yeah, yeah. I did Batman from here. No way. Yep. And can clients, can, can anybody interested in voiceover contact you? You have a website and all that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. As of today, you'll see me following Michael on uh, Instagram. You'll be able to find him there. You'll see his Twitter, Instagram, and I'll put your website below in all the videos he's in. Cool? Yeah. So any, anybody want to do voiceover demos with Michael, go to his website. Right? Yeah. Contact you. Please. It's the name yeah. of the studio. McKenna Sound. Do you have a jingle? I'll make one up. <laughs> <laughs> McKenna Sound. McKenna. <laughs> Did you enjoy playing Pythor? and getting to be such a cool villain that makes the fans love and hate him at the same time. Yeah, that was fun. You know, it was funny because um, with a last name like Chumsworth... <laughs> yeah, that's right, he does. Yes. That's the first thing that came to mind. Was it like, who else would have a last name Chumsworth and not sound like, you know? I immediately thought of um, George Saunders. Yeah, from, you know, the actor. Yes. Yes. I, you know... And from the Jungle Book. Did you audition for anybody else? Pythor was one of like a handful of people I'd auditioned for. You must have been happy when he came back because he came back for. I'm always happy when Day of the Departed. Does he get like he's come back a little bit, hasn't he? Like over the. Yeah. Yeah. Any show, any <laughs> character comes back, you're happy, right? Yes. 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 It's nice when he comes. But yeah, he disappeared. I don't know what happened with the storyline because I disappeared with all these shards, right? And then. Then oh, was, they all and, I, and I thought I was going to, yeah, these no, guys no. Don't know. Yeah. And so, so I thought I was leading up to, I thought I was, was going to be featured more in the, in the upcoming season after that, and um, unfortunately, it wasn't, wasn't there. Well, you can always make a pitch to the Hageman brothers because they they could always write a Pythor season. Yes, but I'm very lonely in my my netherworld. <laughs> I, I remember when we did um, Bionicle way back when, and, um, and that, that that was a lot of fun, and I would meet. I would meet these kids who just knew so much background yeah. of how all these characters came to be and what their backgrounds were and their history and everything. And I was just blown away. It was just phenomenal. Favorite part about playing Pythor? How bumbling he is. Yeah. I, I just, it, it's, um, I mean, he's always got egg on his face. He always, he always thinks he's got the most brilliant plan. He's going to take over everything. He's going to be the guy. He's going to have this army and everybody's just going to be kicking some serious butt. And then, you know, goes wrong. the last, the last like, three or four minutes of the show, I'm running from something. And yes. <laughs> Both biceps on My Little Pony. Yes. What's that all about? Did they cast it because you used to be a bodybuilder and, <laughs> and wreck cars? I hope that wasn't sort of typecast. <laughs> he just thought, well, yeah, who's big and stupid? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah! What's your favorite line as Pythor or moment? Do you remember the famous trumpet fart that you did? <laughs> you were Mark so Oliver? Because it was just so priceless. <laughs> Mark was just horrified. <laughs> What's all that? You go ahead, tell the story. Well, I've told it. They, they, oh, they, know, they it? know it. Yeah, it was one of the funniest. Like I, I, I think I put you as like the Godfather of trumpet parts because that was. So he had a line that something along the lines like, "I only have one thing to say to you." And I went, <laughs> no, 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 it wasn't that. It was trumpet. Yeah, <laughs> and I got up to the mic and it just came out perfect. And Mike looked at me and went, he suddenly realized that everybody bought into it, and yeah. I said it with an innocent look on my face. Everybody thought he did, and they were going. And he looks at me and goes, no, yeah. no, no, no. Like, I literally, everyone thought it, Mark had farted. Like, it was so well done that it was, <laughs> it's like Mark, it was a big dramatic line. I remember that all of a sudden this part. I only have one thing to say to you, son. <laughs> it's still funny. Of all the seasons so far, that's been the funniest moment. <laughs> Because the whole room heard it. Yeah. The whole, whole room thought that was good really <laughs> <laughs> And poor Mike, 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 Mike was horrified. <laughs> if you could go anywhere in the world with anyone, who would it be and where would you go? 
Ooh, that's a good question. But I'd love to go with my wife. Well, that, that's a good answer. That's a safe answer. No, 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 we Especially tra- if she watches we, this. We travel so well together. <laughs> it was, it'd be a lot of fun. So we've talked about it, but I really want to go to Europe. Too that's bad it. you didn't say Brent Miller, because I actually bought us two tickets to leave later today, and they were free, but... Well, completely set up. <laughs> <laughs> um, have, you, have you ever... Brent Miller! Yeah, they want to go with me. It's Brent Miller! Yeah. Uh, very first show you voice acted on. Oh, Rama and a Half, I think. Yeah, I think it was. Was that an ocean show? Or yeah, yeah, it was show? anime, yeah. Um, I had I had some character characters in there that sort of went and then disappeared, and I can't remember the names. But the one that was the funniest was, they cast me as this incidental Staffer C. Yeah. And as other characters disappeared and everything, Stafford, Stafford C. Kept C. Going. Kept he was like one of the longest <laughs> lasting characters on the show. It was awesome. Have you uh, seen any Ninjago? Clips just on, um, on YouTube. Yeah. I, I, I haven't actually seen I've watched, Yeah, I've watched, I've watched stuff on the internet. You guys do an awesome job, by the way. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's a good I think, cast. I think the dynamics work really, really well. There's yeah. so much contrast, so much shading. Like differences between, but you, but they play out like real brothers. It's cool. Yeah, the cast uh, the cast has been pretty well cast. I think. Would Pyther want to eat Brent Miller? <laughs> <laughs> Come I mean, on, man! I mean, this I is like a really that. serious question. Would Pyther want to eat me? <laughs> Am I tasty enough? For- <laughs> Do I need to bathe more? Like, would he not want to? Oh no, you're like, fine, <laughs> just the way you are. <laughs> so yes, right? Yes. You need me? Yes. Nice, nice. <laughs> Medium rare. <laughs> yes. Most difficult uh, voice role to ever act. I tell you, one that shredded me the most was Nappa from Dragon Ball Z. Because I had to talk like this the whole time. Anybody on Dragon Ball Z seemed to have yeah, a really, yeah. You literally have maybe like a two and a half minute sequence of just ripping stuff apart, powering up and then charging through and yeah. and you go all the way through and you have almost an aneurysm doing it and you'd be like and it would come to the end of it and then it'd just be this quiet and then all you would hear is Barry's voice comes through and go, uh I just really like to be able to get that, that. I think if we look back, it was like, you just ended just a little bit soon. And if we could just get that, number, and you're thinking like, please, for the love of God, just can't you just stretch it, this and this. You know, brain freeze? Yeah. Driving home. I think, I wonder if I should go to the hospital because I feel like my brain's bleeding right now. Because <laughs> I just feel like, you know, when you're like, Arr! you push all that yeah, blood to the front I of your know, brain. I know, but I only like brain freezes from Slurpees because I love Slurpees. How do you prepare to voice a character like Pythor? Not, not to sound like, you know, we're, you know, voice actors. Super, like, <laughs> but, but the thing is, is, is that is part of your craft, right? That's part of your skill set. It is, yeah. um, is when you're playing that character, you become that character. Right. So when you know you're going into to play Pythor or whoever you're playing, you everything just kind of shifts. I call them drivers. It's it's just kind of like you have like multiple sets of drivers, and they you just see she's over it again. Wow! D- Instinctively, you just know what you to know do what with to it. Do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know so, what that character would do. But that being said, do you do like uh, vocal exercises on the way to session and all that stuff? I s- sing in my car. You sing? Okay. Yeah. If you could create your own serpentine, what would it be called? Oh, Pythor. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really like Pythor. Chum, P, it's, uh, Pythor, um, there's a letter in there. J. Chumsley, P. Chumsley. Oh, these guys no, no. Yes. I shouldn't have said that. I should have said that. They're going to slag me. And me for not knowing. Should I look it up? No. No, well, don't look it Pythor, up. Pythor, initial Chumsley. 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 Oh, crap. I, I could just get a lot of hate mail from this YouTube. You won't. Interview. Do not send him hate mail. Or I not gonna like me. Like, how does... How does he not know who he, his own character? Yeah, but that's because people would just go by Pythor. Like I don't know his last. You remind me he had a last name. Yeah. So if I was telling people, oh yeah, I play Pythor, like I don't go. I play Jane. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Jane. <laughs>